series begins by showing a caveman named Spear stands atop the cliff, looking out over the vast wilderness that surrounds him. He can't help but feel overwhelmed by the events of the day. It had started out as a simple fishing trip, but had quickly turned into a struggle for survival. First, there was the giant alligator that had attacked him in the stream. Spear had been lucky to escape with his life, diving underwater and using all of his strength to swim to safety. But his luck had not held out for long. As he made his way home, he had been confronted by an aerodactyl, a terrifying prehistoric creature with wings as sharp as knives. Spear had been forced to hide in a tree, heart pounding in his chest, as the creature swooped down towards him. But the worst was yet to come. When Spear arrived at his home, he found that a group of horned Tyrannosaurus had attacked and killed his mate and children. Overcome with grief and rage, he had thrown his spear at one of the beasts, only to be confronted by their mother, who had roared in warning and led her offspring away. Now, as the sun begins to set and the shadows grow long, Spear can't help but feel lost and alone. He stands atop the cliff, looking out at the wilderness that surrounds him, wondering what the future holds. But even as he grieves for his lost family, he knows that he must find a way to move on, to continue fighting for his survival in this harsh and unforgiving world. Spear stood at the edge of the cliff, staring out at the vast expanse of wilderness before him. He was filled with grief and despair, unable to shake the image of his wife and children, brutally murdered by a group of horned Tyrannosaurus. As the sun rose the following morning, Spear found himself drawn back to the water's edge, where he spent the day catching and eating fish raw, lost in his own thoughts. But his solitude was short-lived. As he sat by the water's edge, he was startled by the sudden appearance of a Tyrannosaurus, carrying a fish in its mouth. The creature raced past him, disappearing into a nearby cave. Curious, Spear followed the dinosaur into the cave, where he discovered a mother Tyrannosaurus and her two young offspring. As he watched, a group of horned Tyrannosaurus burst into the cave, intent on preying on the young dinosaurs. Overcome with rage, Spear stepped forward to defend the helpless creatures, his spear clutched firmly in his hand. Together with the mother Tyrannosaurus, Fang, they fought bravely against the attackers, killing two of the three beasts. But as they were about to defeat the final dinosaur, it grabbed Fang and dragged her away, intent on eating her young. Without hesitation, Spear raced to the aid of his ally, jumping into the mouth of the beast and plunging his spear deep into its chest. As the dinosaur fell to the ground, Fang watched in amazement as Spear emerged victorious, her young safe and sound. Together, they stood tall, ready to face whatever challenges the future held. Spear and Fang fought side by side against the ferocious dinosaur, their combined skills and strength a formidable force to be reckoned with. Despite being pushed away and falling into a puddle of water, Spear refused to give up, determined to protect his ally and her young. With Fang by his side, he mounted her back and charged at the dinosaur, using all of his strength and cunning to bring the beast down. In a final, desperate move, Spear jumped onto the dinosaur's back and plunged his spear through its head, watching as its eyes turned bloodshot and it roared in pain before collapsing to the ground, dead. As the battle came to an end, Spear looked to Fang, lying in her nest and mourning the loss of her young. Taking pity on her, he walked out of the cave and onto the beach, with Fang following close behind. She lay at his feet, and he smiled as he mounted her once again, feeling a sense of purpose and belonging as he rode through the jungle. Together, Spear and Fang hunted for food, chasing wild boars and using their skills to bring down their prey. But as they set their sights on their next target, Fang pushed Spear out of the way, eager to claim the kill for herself. Despite his annoyance, Spear couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and admiration for his fierce companion, as they worked together to survive in the harsh and unforgiving wilderness. As Spear makes his way through the woods, he spots a running boar and quickly climbs to the top of a tree to hunt it. But when he arrives at the animal's side, he finds that Fang has beaten him to the kill, and is already feasting on the boar's flesh. Angered by this, Spear walks away and settles for eating an insect that happens to wander past him. Later, as he goes to relieve himself, he is disgusted to find that Fang has defecated right next to him, leaving a large, foul-smelling pile. The next day, Spear spies a fruit tree and climbs up to pluck some of the ripe fruit. But before he can even get his hands on any of it, Fang hits the tree repeatedly, causing both Spear and the fruit to fall to the ground. Fang then nonchalantly eats the fruit, leaving Spear fuming with anger. As the day wears on, the two find themselves in a cave, where Spear sits in a corner while Fang snores loudly nearby. To pass the time, Spear fashions some animals out of his fingers, but he is startled when he sees a horned dinosaur and becomes frightened. Glaring at Fang in anger, he eventually calms down and falls asleep. The following morning, Spear and Fang continue their journey, walking past a waterfall with sharp spikes. As they make their way through the woods, they come across a deer, which promptly runs away at the sight of them. Fang gives chase, but Spear manages to stop her and yells at her until he is hoarse. 
exasperated, he eventually walks away, leaving Fang staring after him in confusion. Determined to catch the deer he had spotted earlier, Spear follows its trail and hides in a nearby bush, waiting for the perfect moment to attack. But before he can even make a move, Fang arrives and kills the deer herself. Furious at being denied his prey, Spear and Fang engage in a fierce fight, with Fang ultimately breaking Spear's spear and roaring in victory. Determined not to give up, Spear breaks off two branches from a nearby tree and uses them as makeshift weapons to continue fighting Fang. But despite his best efforts, Fang ultimately overpowers him, grabbing him in her mouth and attempting to bite him. At the last moment, she relents and throws him into the water instead. As Spear struggles to get back to his feet, the two of them hear a hissing sound and turn to find a large number of snakes covering the woods. They immediately begin to run, but a flood follows closely behind them, pushing the snakes along with it. In the ensuing chaos, Spear and Fang find themselves fighting against snakes underwater. A giant snake singles out Spear as its prey, but Fang intervenes, biting and killing the serpent before it can do any harm. As they swim to the surface, they realize that they are about to go over a waterfall. Desperately, Spear grabs hold of the giant snake's body and uses it to anchor himself and Fang to a nearby rock, but it slips out of his hand at the last moment, and they both plummet over the edge. Spear hits several rocks on the way down before finally hitting the ground and passing out. When he comes to, he finds that Fang has carried him to the shore and is watching over him worriedly. Relieved to be alive, Spear slowly stirs and eventually wakes up. As Spear lies on the ground, Fang approaches him and coughs up the tip of his spear, offering it to him as a sign of peace. Moved by this gesture, the two of them decide to work together and set off in search of a wild boar to hunt. That night, as they huddle around a warm fire, Spear manages to kill a snake that had been frightening Fang. The next day, a herd of woolly mammoths strides through the area, blanketed in a thick snowstorm. Among them is an older mammoth, severely wounded and struggling to keep up with the rest of the herd. It eventually loses track of the others and trumpets in distress as it tries to find them. Wandering alone, the mammoth comes across some footprints on the ground and gets down on its knees, trying to make its way down a hill. But before it can go any further, Spear emerges from hiding and attacks it. Fang also appears, but the mammoth pushes Spear away and the two stand their ground. As the mammoth struggles to fight back, Spear hits its eye repeatedly with a rock, and Fang helps him push it down as he continues his assault. Staring into the mammal's eyes, Spear feels a moment of remorse as it struggles to get back up. But ultimately, he gives it the killing blow, and the woolly mammoth dies. Grateful for the fresh meat and warmth it will provide, Spear tears off some of the mammoth's wool and uses it to make a coat for himself. Together, he and Fang remove the meat from the mammoth's carcass and prepare it for cooking. When the time comes to move their sled, Spear tries to get Fang to help him drag it, but she stubbornly refuses and walks away. Undeterred, Spear uses the sled's tusk to drag it through the snowy wilderness, struggling through a fierce storm. As they make their way, Fang becomes separated from Spear and frantically roars as she searches for him. Eventually, Spear emerges from the storm, and the two of them sit on the ground, catching their breath. As the storm rages on, Spear and Fang spot a nearby cave and decide to seek shelter there. Meanwhile, the herd of woolly mammoths has discovered the body of their fallen comrade, and their leader is horrified to find that one of its tusks is missing. Roaring in anger, the leader sees the tracks left behind by Spear and Fang and sets off in pursuit. Inside the cave, Fang eats some of the leftover mammoth meat and offers some to Spear, but he refuses. Instead, he draws a depiction of the mammoth on the cave wall, reminiscing about the time he took his son hunting. In his memory, Spear and his son disguise themselves as animals and stalk their prey, with Spear eventually giving his son a weapon and jumping in to kill the animal himself. As the animal dies, Spear places his hand on it and his son follows suit. As Spear sits in the cave, lost in thought, a strange force hits it repeatedly, causing the cave to begin collapsing. Frightened, Spear and Fang run for their lives as the cave crumbles around them. As the cave crumbles around them, Spear and Fang flee for their lives. They are caught off guard by a herd of woolly mammoths, who seem to be attacking them. Despite their best efforts, they are no match for the powerful beasts, and are quickly overpowered. In a desperate attempt to save her, Spear tries to reach Fang, but he is pushed aside by one of the mammoths. He falls to the ground, narrowly avoiding the debris from the collapsing cave. Fang's roars of pain reach Spear's ears, and he struggles to get back on his feet. Determined to save her, he charges towards the herd leader, who is holding Fang in its tusks. He manages to knock the mammoth off balance, causing it to drop Fang. The herd seems to sense Spear's strength and determination, and they back off, allowing him to take the tusk of the leader as a symbol of peace. The herd walks away, leaving Spear and Fang to tend to their wounds. But their troubles are far from over. A swarm of velociraptors is hot on their heels, and they are forced to run for their lives once again. 
Despite the raptor's fierce attacks, Spear manages to fight them off, using the skills he has learned as a hunter. Fang is bitten on the leg by one of the raptors, but she manages to shake it off and continue running. Finally, they reach safety, battered and bruised but alive. As Spear and Fang run from the swarm of velociraptors, they enter a crop field, hoping to lose their pursuers among the rows of plants. But the raptors are relentless, and they continue to follow the two friends. Emerging from the field, Spear and Fang find themselves surrounded by the raptors, with no way out. Just as all hope seems lost, the sun goes down, and the raptors suddenly turn and run away, leaving Spear and Fang confused and relieved. As they continue their journey, a blood moon rises in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the landscape. They walk through a misty field and come across a series of strange pillars, each adorned with skulls. The pillars startle Spear, but Fang seems unfazed, and the two continue on their way. As they walk, they have the distinct feeling that they are being watched. Hiding behind a rock, they see a feral man approaching, carrying a boar. The man slips and falls, breaking his knee in the process. He roars in pain, and several more feral people emerge from the surrounding bushes. One of them rushes to help the injured man, but he is snatched away by a strange flying animal, a giant bat. Feeling a sense of compassion, Spear decides to help the man and carries him and the boar back to their cave. The feral people crawl into the walls to hide, and the giant bat emerges, ready to attack. But before it can strike, Fang leaps into action, decapitating the creature with a swift blow. Four giant bats appear, and Spear picks up his weapon, ready to fight alongside his friend. As Spear fights off the giant bats, one of them tries to grab him, but he manages to stab it through the mouth, killing it. He sees several other bats lifting Fang into the air and rushes to stop them. One of the bats manages to carry him away, while Fang fights off the remaining bats and pursues the one that has taken Spear. Despite his struggles, Spear is unable to break free from the bat's grasp and eventually hits his head on a rock, knocking him unconscious. Meanwhile, Fang arrives at the giant bat's cave, which she sees as a vertical hill. She tries to climb it, but the surface is too steep, and she falls to the ground. As she stares up at the bats flying out of the cave, an idea comes to her. She roars at the bats and pretends to be dead, hoping to trick them into lowering their guard. The plan works, and the bats fly down to her, carrying her into the cave. They place her on a pile of dead animals and fly away, leaving her alone in the dark. Fang gets up and begins exploring the cave, searching for Spear. She comes across a tunnel with cobwebs on the walls and realizes that there must be people trapped inside. As she approaches, a giant spider emerges and walks towards her. The spider attacks Fang with its webs, trying to pull her closer. She bites its leg, causing it to slam her against the walls. Despite the spider's strength, Fang refuses to give up. She fights back, determined to find Spear and free him from the webs that bind him. As Spear grabbed a rock and swung it at the spider, it managed to hit him and send him flying. But he quickly recovered and, noticing a nearby dead dinosaur, grabbed its horn and used it to stab the spider in the head. The spider collapsed, but before Spear and Fang could celebrate their victory, they saw a swarm of bats heading towards their cave. Spear had an idea and ran back to the spider's body. He climbed inside its mouth and began pulling out the web it had stored inside. He wrapped the web around Fang and then pushed her out of the cave, using the web to slow their descent. Once they were safely out of the cave, Spear and Fang ran as fast as they could, trying to put as much distance between themselves and the approaching bats as possible. But the bats were relentless, and soon they were right on the heels of Spear and Fang. Just when it seemed like the bats would catch up to them, Spear saw a crop field in the distance and had a plan. He led Fang towards the field, hoping to lure the bats inside where they could be attacked by the raptors that lived there. The plan worked, and as the raptors swooped in to attack the bats, Spear and Fang made their escape. Exhausted and hungry, they continued their journey through the jungle, searching for food and water. Eventually, they stumbled upon a beautiful stream, and Spear couldn't resist the temptation to jump in and catch some fish with his bare hands. He shared his catch with Fang, and the two of them sat by the water's edge, enjoying the peaceful moment. As a butterfly flew by, Fang chased after it and discovered a swarm of butterflies just a short distance away. Feeling rejuvenated and grateful for their friendship, Spear and Fang made hand and paw prints in the soft ground by the stream, cementing their bond and their memories of this special day. An earthworm suddenly emerged from the ground and startled her, bringing back memories of the snakes she had encountered earlier. She quickly turned and ran, leaving the earthworm behind for Spear to eat. Determined to have some fun, Spear decided to swim deeper into the water. He grinned at Fang as he dove under the surface, hoping to play a prank on her. But when he emerged from the water, Fang was nowhere to be found. Following a set of footprints, Spear set off into the woods to find her. As he searched, he was suddenly knocked unconscious. When he came to, he found himself tied up next to Fang, surrounded by ape men. One of the ape men climbed up onto a platform and ordered the ceremony to begin. 
The apes began fighting each other and in the final match, a small blue ape faced off against a much larger opponent. Using its quick movements and agility, the blue ape was able to defeat the larger one and emerge as the winner. As the ceremony came to a close, the ape men lowered Fang and a man with a staff approached, pouring a drop of a strange liquid into the victorious ape's mouth. The ape began to mutate and grow, transforming into a much larger ape before their eyes. As the giant ape loomed over her, Fang struggled to free herself from the ropes that bound her. She tried to fight back, but the ape was too powerful and easily knocked her down. From his place on the ground, Spear watched in horror as the ape broke Fang's leg. Meanwhile, Spear was struggling to free himself. He watched as Fang fought bravely, but it was clear that she was no match for the giant ape. He climbed to her feet and, with all of her might, punched the ape in the eye. The ape roared in pain and threw her aside. Desperate to help her, he searched for a way to break free of his bonds. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, Spear saw an opportunity. He watched as the ape man with the staff approached, and with a burst of strength, he managed to push the man aside and grab the strange liquid for himself. As the other ape men attacked, he drank the liquid and began to mutate, growing in size and strength. The transformation gave Spear the power he needed to fight back. He charged at the giant ape and engaged it in a fierce battle, tearing off its arms and beating it to death. The ape men, realizing that Spear was now too strong for them to defeat, tried to run away, but Spear was not about to let them escape. He chased them down and slaughtered them, leaving no survivors. As the sun rose the next morning, the effects of the strange liquid wore off and Spear returned to his normal size. He rushed